Thank you very much, Your Excellency President William Ruto, my lady, the Chief Justice, Mother Kome. Let me ride on the protocols because I see so many eminent persons here. But with the permission of the President, I could just mention the AG was not mentioned. I think I didn't hear AG is here and uh, DPP. DPP, Renson Ngonga, A.G. Dorcas Odor, and um, the leader of majority in the National Assembly, Kimani Shungwa, among other very senior and eminent persons present here. Your Excellency, because of time, I allow me to say I'm happy to be here um, to celebrate uh, what our Supreme Court has done for the last 12 years. And it's a good thing that our Supreme Court has decided to introspect and reflect even as they usher themselves into teenage. Because now they are 12, so they are entering teenage and the responsibilities and, and the experiences of teenage will obviously visit their experience. Um, and therefore, and, and that is on a light note, I'm very careful, Your Excellency, because I am uh, an officer of the court, so I'm very careful what I say. I don't want to be accused later of saying that uh, the Supreme Court is entering teenage uh, in future. Your Excellency, allow me to say two quick things before I invite you. The first one is to appreciate what our Supreme Court has done to create formidable jurisprudence on major public interest uh, issues and major public um, matters of uh, public and national importance. In the short time the Supreme Court of Kenya has ex uh, existed, the, the jurisprudence has been quite uh, groundbreaking. And um, on that front, I think it will be unfair for any assessor to actually fault the performance of the Supreme Court. To deliver the public good called justice, of course the court has to do that through its jurisprudence and through the decisions they make. The court has also done very well in terms of the infrastructure, the software, the technology bit, and among the arms of government and the agencies of government, I think the judiciary is ahead of uh, the rest of us. I remember my Lord Chief Justice Maraga when uh, we were confronted with uh, the predicament of COVID, issued certain uh, rules, which we now call the Maraga rules, practice rules, which actually made justice, you know, faster, more efficient, more convenient, even if we were lock all locked down by this public health emergency called COVID. And even after COVID um, um, lapsed, it, it appears that the way of the future in the administration of justice will be through the virtual courts and making sure we spend a lot, a, a little time or less, as less time as possible in, in a physical uh, uh, engagements in courtroom. So again, on the issue of technology and the software for delivering the jurisprudence or delivering justice, the Supreme Court has done a good job. The only little thing where perhaps there is a need to make progress, and I've already heard from our leadership, the Chief Justice and the other speakers, progress is being made. I am also aware, Your Excellency, you shared a high level discussion around that subject matter the issue of um, physical facilities for the court, because that's the area where perhaps uh, the Supreme Court needs to in make sure they have a modern uh, physical infrastructure for delivering justice. And um, other than that, I think on a fair assessment, the court has done a good job. The second and last issue, Your Excellency, I want to mention is um, I have been wondering, even as I got to look at the subject matter of this uh, conference, while the Supreme Court and the other courts, especially the High Court also, and the Court of Appeal, have helped us start developing crucial jurisprudence on 
important issues like public participation, like public interest, and how we handle the tensions between these broad interests with individual rights and freedoms, which are also powerfully protected in our Bill of Rights. I, as a student of law, I'll be interested to going forward uh, hear or learn what the Supreme Court and the other superior courts will tell us about beyond public interest whether there are other higher interests and I'm saying this uh, with a bit of bias your excellency because um, it's in the public domain I'm the immediate security minister for our country after you appointed me two years ago. And during those two years, I have had to ask myself whether the highest interest is the public interest or there is a higher interest called the national interest. Because the public itself could hurt the national interest. And the Constitution talks about the national interest in two places. At the beginning, and also in the chapter on national security. Other than the parameters and principles that the courts are helping us to understand about public interest, are there other higher values, primordial, existential, fundamental principles which are crucial to the existence of Kenya? Because the public can can be mobilized or can mobilize itself to do the wrong things that threaten the existence of the state. And therefore, that is the next frontier of jurisprudence I would invite us to start thinking about and the Supreme Court can help us in that regard. And very finally, I think the Chief Justice and the other speakers have ably brought out how we minimize the tensions between independence of the arms of government and the interdependence of the arms of government. That tension needs to be cleaned up a bit so that we do not hurt the four aspects of independence, especially for the judiciary. Operational independence, administrative independence, financial independence, and decisional independence. Beyond those four pillars of independence, there's a lot of interdependence, there's a lot of relationships that be, be nurtured in a healthy manner without impairing the pedestal or without interfering with the place where the judiciary sits so that the nation and the state can continue to exist. Sorry, Your Excellency, Nimesema Mengi Kidogo. And with those uh, remarks, Your Excellency, I now want to ask uh, our colleagues if we can be upstanding as we invite His Excellency the President to address us. Asante sana. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy President. Please, let's take our seats. <clears throat> um, Mr. Deputy President, Your Ladyship, the Chief Justice, of the Republic of Kenya and President of the Supreme Court, Prime Cabinet Secretary, DCJ, um, our Attorney General, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Justices of the Supreme Court, Justice William Mutunga, Chief Justice Emeritus, Justice Maraka, Chief Justice Emeritus, Madam Nancy Barasa, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Jambo. Um, I'm truly happy to be here this morning. Um, I know Um, you have convened this meeting, as was explained to us, to reflect about uh, 12 years 
and to listen to stakeholders, uh, people who are affected by your decisions, people who um, in one way or another um, become part of the court system. And uh, unlike Sakaja, who has never been a client at the Supreme Court, I am a very consistent uh, <laughs> cli <laughs> client at the Supreme Court. I have been brought before